Chances are by now you've either heard of crypto, have some, or you know someone who does and you're thinking about maybe falling into the rabbit hole. So why is cryptocurrency so popular? And how is it different compared to the good old fashioned paper dollar, also known as fiat? To answer that, we need to look back to when crypto as it is known today first came to be. In 2008, when the global economy was in shambles and the US housing bubble was bursting, there was a desire to find an alternative financial solution, one that didn't require a central bank or any government oversight. Amidst the global financial crashes, Bitcoin was born. The manifesto of Bitcoin was created to offer the one main product that banks fiat currency couldn't give you, and that's decentralization meaning no one was the boss. Another critical principle of Bitcoin, there will only ever be 21 million mine, ever, in the world. That's it. In a world of quantitative easing, endless printing of money, and all the inflationary pressures, that drives the value of fiat money differently than crypto. Crypto and fiat do have one main thing in common though. They both have no intrinsic value and aren't based on commodities like gold or silver. However, they can't be more different. One of the fundamental differences between crypto and fiat is how it's backed. Fiat currencies are backed by the central bank and the government. They control the flow, print, and distribution of paper cash, and are thus called centralized. Money represents ultimately a country's economy, or better yet, a country's economic potential. Cryptocurrencies don't have a physical form and are only digital. They're backed by cryptographic ledger technology called blockchain. The decentralized nature means that no one person or group is controlling it. The economic potential here is tied to blockchain itself and how crypto is used in transactions either in finance, enterprise, play to earn, the metaverse, NFTs, you name it. Another difference between fiat and crypto is that the central banks or government print paper money based on inflation rates to meet the economic cycle. There's no limit on how much paper money can be printed. Cryptocurrency, however, are fixed in number and have a fixed circulation. There's a number of cryptocurrency that can be mined, and if they're all mined, then there's no more excess supply of it. This gives crypto deflationary characteristics. But remember, not all crypto are created equal. Note the altcoin explosion, but that's for another episode. Last but definitely not least, anyone can use cryptocurrency. You can be anonymous even. Since crypto is digital, technically the only thing you need is internet access to join and use the decentralized finance services. Crypto can serve people or areas that are underbanked and offer financial freedom. That may have been unimaginable in the past. However, cryptocurrency is still a young market. Despite its growth, its shortcomings still make it difficult to use it as a real currency in everyday life. Unlike fiat, which has had years of regulation and is relatively stable, crypto is still going through this process. But as we speak, crypto is constantly changing, evolving, and improving. There's no doubt crypto is carving a place for itself as a global asset. Once the stuff of cyberpunks, now institutions and traditional investors are piling into this alternative asset class. Money is evolving, and it's going digital. Through history, we've transitioned from bartering, to using gold and silver, to establishing paper money. And now as we digitize our economy, Cryptocurrency is simply the next step in this human evolution of how we want to trade with each other.